Guys, I am Muchaka and I am back with Maths XYZ and today we will still be continuing with trigonometric in reduction formulas. Alright, uh, with reduction formulas, what we need to take into consideration, the most important, is this Cartesian thing, of which this is all sign, tan and cos. It says all students take it just to, um, just to have a statement which will make it easy for you to remember. And then in the first quadrant, we have all trigonometric ratio positive, sine, cos, and tan. And in the second quadrant, it's only sine which is positive. And in the third quadrant, only tan is positive. And in the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive. Then in the first quadrant, again, we have 90 minus theta. In the second one, we have 90 plus theta. And also 180 minus theta. In the third one, we have 180 plus theta and also 270 minus theta. And in the fourth one, we have 270 plus theta and 360 minus theta. In the first one also, we have 360 plus theta as well. Then from here, we know that uh, 90 plus or minus theta, which is this and this one, and 270 plus or minus theta, they are the core function of sine and cos. Then if it's sine 90 plus theta, the answer will be cos theta. Sine changes into cos and cos changes into sine. The core functions only affect the cos uh, and sine, but it does not affect the time. And also in the fourth quadrant, we have negative theta of which is positive in the fourth quadrant so that means that if we have sine of negative theta the answer will be negative sine theta if we have cos of negative theta the answer will be negative um uh if we have tan of negative theta i need to say the answer will be negative tan theta but if we have cos of negative theta the answer will actually be positive cos theta all right um uh, and then when we are dealing with this as well, you must always remember that your core function changes uh, into the other trigonometric ratios. All right, let's see how we can apply all of this into uh, this example. All right, the example is cos into 90 plus theta divided by cos into 360 minus theta multiplied by tan into 360 minus theta. All right, and then with the first one, remember that we are dealing with a uh, core function because it's 90 plus theta. With 90 plus theta, it's found on the second quadrant of which in the second quadrant, only sine is positive in the second quadrant. But now that we have cos, that means that the answer will be negative cos theta. But it won't be negative cos theta because um, uh, 90 plus theta is a core function. That means that the answer will be actually be negative sine theta because cos changes into sine and sine changes into cos. Then the answer will be negative sine theta. All right, divide by. For this one, 360 minus theta is in the axis where uh, 360 minus theta and cos theta, they are in the same axis. That means that the answer is positive uh, cos theta. All right, and then tan theta is uh, tan theta and uh, 360 minus theta, they are found in different uh, quadrant. That means that the answer is negative tan theta. Negative tan theta. All right, now that we have this, we know that uh, sine and sine divided by cos is actually is equal to uh, tan. That means that we have negative tan theta multiplied by this one. It will actually be 1 divided by negative tan theta as well. The negative and negative will cancel out, and this and that as well, it, they will actually cancel out as well. Then from here, we'll be left with this and this will cancel out, and we'll be left with 1. All right, I hope you guys understood this example uh, when we are dealing with uh, reduction formulas in trigonometry. All right, so let's do another example and see how we can still apply all this in an example. All right, the example is a sign uh, theta minus 180 divided by tan 360 minus theta multiplied by sine into 90 uh, minus theta. All right, all this uh, minus the side cos beta. Remember, we have theta and beta this time. Multiply by sine into 90 minus beta. 
All right, with this one here as well, guys, so we have theta, theta minus 90. Remember, with this one, we always take out a common factor of a negative. That means if we have something like this, we'll have um, sine negative into 180 minus theta divided by tan 360 minus theta. 360 minus theta is in the fourth quadrant of which uh, only cos is positive at that quadrant. That means we have negative tan theta. And then sine 90 minus theta is a co-function of which it will be cos theta minus cos beta cos beta multiplied by cos sine into 90 minus beta is a core function as well which will actually be multiplied by cos beta as well then with this one sine of negative theta it, it will actually be negative and 180 minus theta it will be positive so the, this one it will be negative sine theta divide by tan theta uh, multiplied by cos theta minus cos beta squared all right sine divided by cos it will actually be tan theta divided by tan theta minus cos beta all right cos squared beta i mean to say this is squared beta all right tan divided by tan it will actually be equals to one then it will be one minus cos beta beta cos beta squared then this one just to make up space i'll write the side guys so it will be one minus cos uh, squared beta. Remember with trigonometric identity 1 minus cos beta squared it will actually give us sine beta squared. Sine beta squared. Alright guys I hope you understood this example as well um, because all the trigonometric uh, ratios that we have done since the beginning of trigonometric lessons always know that you will always apply those rules in any question whatsoever. Like for this one we also apply trigonometric identities and also apply this in the trigonometric in Cartesian plane. And also also remember about the negative angle which is only positive in the fourth quadrant only. But in this other quadrant it's, it remains as negative. Alright guys, uh, if you have any question, please uh, let us know and we'll have a follow up on it. And don't forget to subscribe to MathXYZ so that you can get daily notification when we upload videos. Thank you.